Proverbs chapter 16. Now we've come out of the Proverbs of right and wrong, evil and righteousness. And we're going back to the, well, we've been in the theme of Proverbs. But the last few chapters have taught us individual verses, our conduct, where do we stand? <clears throat> we come back to general Proverbs again of lessons of King Solomon just written out. The preparations, that's to prepare, that's to study, it's to get ready. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be shamed, rightly dividing the, rightly dividing the word of the word of truth. The preparations of the heart, and notice it does not say head. You don't go into reading the Bible with for the head knowledge. What can I find where other people are wrong? No, you got to go reading and studying the Bible to what is wrong with you. You got to cast, I forget which is the moat or the beam. That is in thy eye rather than the next person. And then when you've got a life that's confessed, sins confessed, and under the blood of Jesus Christ, then God can use you in a ministry. The preparations of the heart in man. And notice it doesn't say, say it says hey, the man. If a lost man were to take the Bible and listen to what the Bible says and listen to a true Bible preacher, well, let me say true Bible preacher, even the lost man, the preparation of his heart, he can know the knowledge of the holy and come to Jesus Christ and be saved. It's open to all men, saved or lost. And the answer of the tongue is of the Lord. There are many times in my public ministry, and going back to the very first public ministry I had, when I was saved April 25th and April 26th, I went the next day and, and told my dad about hell and he was going there because I've come out of hell. And I've seen over and over in prison ministry and street ministries and picnic table ministries and church and uh all the places that God has used me, forgive me for allergies. I have seen God open my mouth and I look back later. Wow, I didn't know I knew that scripture. I didn't know I knew that verse. I didn't know I knew that in the Bible. That's because I have read the Bible with my heart and the Holy Spirit has treasured it in my heart to use it later. <clears throat> I said today, he's preaching on the street. I told him, I said, listen, you be angry. And they are. But if there's one thing you're going to know, you're going to be here week after week after week with me. You're going to know, Acts 16, 31, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I open up all my street preaching. This is something that the Holy Spirit will have me to do. It gets me going. I open up with John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. We had one time we were setting up at the farmer's market a long time ago. And we were setting up our chairs and the signs and, and the audio. And, and there was over there at the booth and they're not there no more, but there was over there at the booth. They they quoted John 3.16 back to us. I haven't even started yet. And there are times in the, my public ministry, I'll, I'll start I'll start a Bible verse and somebody will, will be quoting it with me or finish it. Don't ever say the public ministry doesn't work. It works. All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes. 
religion, education, politics, science, career. We're all doing well and, and proper and we don't need God or I've got God and my God is not what your God is telling you to do. And that's all right in their own eyes. I had a man come up to me, filthy mouth, and I'm a Christian. And he got angry. I said, well, that was not a Christian mouth that you have. And began to challenge him with scriptures in the proper right attitude. All the ways of the man are clean in his own eyes. That's religion. But the Lord weighs the spirits. John says in 1 John, I think it is, we're to try the spirits. We had a woman come up to us today, and that with a loud voice that you recognize from the scriptures, not a loud voice preparing the gospel, but a loud voice attacking the preacher, devilish. And there are spirits out there that they're working in people. And Paul says there's another spirit and the Lord will weigh that spirit out. Is it the Holy Spirit that's in you? Or is it a, a, a Baptist spirit? Is it a Catholic spirit? Is it a devilish spirit? Is it an occult spirit? Is it an evolution spirit? See, everything is right in man's own eyes. But what man has believed, God's going to weigh it out and say, okay, which is it? And Paul has given us a warning to the Corinthian church. There is another God, another Jesus, and another spirit. And I preach that on the streets today. You may have Jesus. But do you have the biblical Jesus? People come up to me all the time. That's not what Jesus would do. You're turning the people away. Evidently, you have not read and studied the Bible. And I've got to look at you and say, well, what spirit are you? Because what I am doing is biblical. What I am doing is correct. And now I'll pull out my little card I got in my Bible quoting a, a, a first verse in, in Isaiah. and says, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And, and, and to the point, show my people their transgressions. And I will remind them in heaven with loud voices, the angels and all the servants of God. Praise the Lord. Commit thy works unto the Lord. Work for the Lord. I've got a terrible, miserable job. Do it for the Lord. My church wants me to go out and witness. Do it for the Lord. My pastor wants me to give money. Do it for the Lord. They want me to hand out gospel tracts. Do it for the Lord. I want to be a proper husband. Do it for the Lord. I want to be a proper father. Do it for the Lord. And thy thoughts shall be established. The result of giving God your works There are many times that I am laying in bed, whether I'm sleeping or I'm falling off or night dreaming, if you want to call it that. And I get the thoughts of a great revival under. Because I want to see people get saved. And I have thought about those that, that have angry and challenged me. And I have just had great thoughts of them coming to know Christ as their Savior. And turning around and praising the Lord. The Lord has made all things for himself. Look at the creation. There are colors of creatures the deepest part of the oceans of the, of the world that man cannot see unless he's got submarines. Man would never see him without the submarine and cameras. 
but God saw him. There is wonder and great amazement in the heavens that if it wasn't for the Hubble Space, Sh uh, uh, Space Telescope, we would never see what God sees. And when we look at the heavens and we look at the creatures, the peacock, the realm of the colors of the birds and the, the realm of the colors of the rainbow, we look at and we see that God is a colorful God. Yay! That's, that's what's called in Genesis 3 by the devil. Even the wicked for the day of evil. And that's against Calvin. God has a determined purpose for those who will remain and stay wicked and continue to do their wickedness. That defiles all people are going to heaven. That defiles what God hates the sin and loves the sinner. Uh, there's a Bible verse there that, that you need to take that sampler off the wall and throw it in the garbage can. But before you throw it in the garbage can, put paint all over it, scratch it all up, break it up, slam it up so no one else can take it out and believe that un garbage nonsense. Everyone. Without exclusion, without a loophole, that is proud in heart, is there any excuse of everyone? Is there anybody who God said, no, not you? Them, you, I'm proud to be American. I'm proud of my race. I'm proud of my religion. I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of my school. I'm proud of my team. I'm proud of everyone that is proud in heart. Everyone, including the Baptist, including the Christian, is an abomination to the Lord. And I said a great study will be coming much later on. You know, it's a sodomy, Sodom, Gomorrah, Sodomites, lesbians, homosexuals are abomination to God, the sins thereof. So is your proud. I am proud of my church. I am proud of my children. I am for everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Plain and simple, and I feel another sneeze coming. Though hand joy hand. What's that? Nice to meet you. Glad to meet you. How you doing? Handshaking and clapping. He singular shall not be unpunished. Everyone that is proud, pride, in heart, is an abomination to the Lord, though hand, there's a pair, joint hand, and usually that doesn't mean you joining hands with your own hand. That means you're getting in hands with somebody else. Now you got a pair. He, singular, shall not be unpunished. The context of that verse is the one with pride. And he's going around making deals and clapping and shaking hands and all that. Both will be unpunished. You better be careful of pride. By mercy and truth. Well, that's not the media. That's not education. Education says the Big Bang. That defies the Bible. 
There, I don't completely understand what it all is about, but I've been told it's wrong. There's the common core map. That's wrong. History is being rewritten in the textbooks of the schools because some people have been offended. That's the case, then that's not the truth. Bibles have been rewritten because I don't like that word in the Bible. I don't like that God is a he. I think blood is too bloody. So the modern Bibles, with the exception to the Bible, the King James 1611 Bible, is not verse 6. And when you got a person, because there could be a male or female behind a podium or, por or pulpit in a church or hall or what have you, And if he's speaking a lie after the devil, that he does not go by verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Say this prayer. You're going to heaven. No, you're not. Because that's not the truth. That's not the mercy. Well, if you go in this little booth and you kneel down and you tell the man in black behind the, the wall with, with a little screen you tell him all your sins and you'll be absolved of your sins no you're not he's lying to you well if you come to our church and you pay for genealogy <coughs> we'll find your genealogy of any ancestral person and all that and then you could pay with can't whatever they do that is a lie that's not Mercy, that's not the truth. Iniquity is purged by the blood of Jesus Christ, so mercy and truth is Jesus, and Jesus is the one to say about himself, I am the way, the truth. Look, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 6, we found Jesus. It is by mercy we can get to the Father through Jesus Christ. It is by the truth of Jesus Christ we can be purged of our sins and no other. So it's remarkable that in the Old Testament we can find Jesus if we read and if we study. Jesus is there. But too many people do not want to look for Jesus, because too many people don't read their Bible, and then you're troubled. Just making notes here. So, see, I even learn when I'm doing a message. When, oh, wait a minute, so by, and, it, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Why can't I quit my sin? Because you don't fear God. Why can't I get victory over my because you don't fear you 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 uh, you don't fear the Lord. There it is. The fear of the Lord is, is depart from evil. Evil is a evil can be a sin. You're not getting victory because you love that sin more than you love the Lord. There it is, black and white. In the King James Bible. You want to get over that sin? You better get the fear of the Lord. When a man's way pleases the Lord, he maketh his enemies to be at peace with him. Again, I preach the gospel in Daytona Beach, and there are some people, they don't like Jesus. They don't approve of Jesus. They don't want to have anything to do with Jesus. But they're fine. One guy we know. He, he likes to, you know, the, the, the Constitution where we have the freedom of speech. He denies the Lord, but sometimes he doesn't. And he's with us because we, we don't preach Jesus in his eyes. We, we're practicing our First Amendment of free speech. 
And then we got people who hate God and hate Jesus. And today they'll cuss us out and everything. And remember, when you come to a verse like this, it's not contradiction because there are some people that will, will uh, appease. Pilate was an enemy of the gospel. He did not believe on Jesus, but he wanted to set Jesus free. He said, listen, all right, I'll just chastise him and I'll send him home. If that will satisfy you. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. You're making a living. I'm working. I'm making a living. And if your job is deceiving, if your job is falsifying, if your job is discredit to others, to get advantage of others, to deceive others, there is no righteousness in that. It'd be better if you had a little righteousness than all the fame and fortune you get from your job that has no righteousness. A man's heart, there's that heart again, devises his way. But the Lord directed his steps. What you want, God will give you free will. You say, why are there many millions of people in the modern church, in the modern church movement? Because that's what they want. And God says, there you go. You know, you know what the terrible, awful fact and truth with God and the Bible is? If you want a lie, God will give you a lie. There was a king that was in this complete wickedness. And God said, hey, I'm looking for somebody in heaven. Who's going to deceive that king? And the Bible says a lying spirit came up and said, I'll deceive him. What with? I'll go and lie in his prophet. I'll have his prophets tell a lie. And God says, go. And God sent forth the lying spirit. You know what's wrong with religion? God may, hey, that's what you, you want, Mary? Okay, fine. I'll give you Mary. She ain't going to do you no good. You want alcohol, booze, and all that? That's Okay, I'll give it to you. But don't get mad at the preacher that gets on the street and tells you about Jesus and tells you about the truth and tells you how to come to heaven and tells you how to get victory over your life. Don't get mad at him. All right. I'll, at the end of the day, you guys go home. I'll turn you to the, back to your liquor and I'll turn you back to your drugs. And that guy will go home and he'll teach the Bible and he'll study the Bible. I will. That I I had a wonderful great nap of two or three hours this afternoon when I came home. And I was feeling terrible. I was in pain. I was sore. And God says, "You did what you were supposed to do. I am well pleased. Lay down. Cuddle your dog with you." I, th I think I slept two or three hours. I bet you that guy didn't get a nap. I bet you that guy's probably still mad at the preaching of the cross right now at 730. I'm not mad. I'm joyful. I think I got I got a phone call from my pastor. He said, hey, I heard everything went well. You know, nothing bad happened. Amen. Glory to God. And we had some opposition, but that's normal. Hey. I guarantee you those people that were screaming and hollering at me, they're not going with the peace that I have tonight. And one of them, I told him, the guy's cussing me out. and said, you don't have the joy. You don't have the love. You don't have the peace. Come to Jesus. Get saved. Get the Holy Spirit. Listen, that guy's getting mad because I'm telling him, hey, I got the joy in the Lord, and I got a smile on my face. And, and they're... Brr. But God will give a man... What that man wants. And God and that man will stand at the great white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ for a Christian. And it goes true for Christian. Well, God, why would you lie that? Why would you allow that to happen? That's what you wanted. I 
I got a man that's in church and I corrected him with the Bible a couple of times. He got mad and, and, he, and he's said, well, God, why did things happen? I said, he helps you. He tried to help you. You didn't want to help. All right, keep on going the way you're going. You know, when the disciples were in that storm on the sea, and the Bible records that, that miraculous moment that Jesus was walking on the water, you know what the Bible says to, to, the, to the context, to the fact that Jesus would have walked right on by if they didn't cry out to him. Those, road, that, those two men on the road to Emmaus, Jesus was going to keep going if they didn't invite him into the house. If you don't, if Jesus is standing knocking on the door in Revelation 3, you don't open that door and he ain't going to come in. He's not going to force himself. A divine sentence in the lips of the king. Put that to Jesus. Put that to the, to the political authority. His mouth transgresses not in judgment. And you put that to the Lord Jesus Christ also. Jesus Christ is not ever going to transgress. And Jesus Christ will judge you. And he will be king. That cannot be said about any, any, any earthly ruler, whether it is a king, prime minister, president, whatever the title of the office, of the highest office of that nation. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That has to be put to Jesus Christ. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. If you have a business and, and you correctly and properly make sure they get a gallon for a gallon, get an ounce for an ounce, and get a pound for a pound, a dozen for a dozen, that's of the Lord. If you have a gas station and they go up and they put 15 gallons of gas in their car and they got 14.93, that's dishonest and God does not approve of it. Well, that's not me. That was the computer. No, that's you. See, you're not going to be able to blame the computers. You're not going to be able to blame the mechanics of, of working things. If your customer, in even in error, has been shortchanged by your business, by your transaction, that's not of the Lord. All the weights of the bag are his works. And they carry those weights around in a bag. And every one of those weights that are proper, a just weight and a just balance, that's God's work. If you got unjust weights and unjust uh, balances, that's not God. You got a bag full of the devil. So did Judas. It is an abomination. It is an abomination. To king. To commit wickedness. I'm, don't, I'm not going to say it. I'll go on the other side of the ocean. Okay. Let, let me pick on England. Queen of Elizabeth. I, my understanding. Sir Knighted. Made a knight. Of Elton John. The Sodomite. It would be an abomination to a queen. To queen. She committed wickedness. She gave permission openly of a Sodomite. And you don't like what I'm saying. And that's perfectly fine. I'm doing what the Bible has to say. And you can go ask the people on Magolia Avenue in Daytona Beach on Saturday. I am not going to pre preach to please them. I'm going to preach what the Bible pleases. Okay? 
I remember there was a, not the president now, there was a past president, past president, there was something, and it had all the pictures of that president and a man sitting down outside at the Rose Garden at a table, and they had a beer together. There was an ex-president whose wife was involved in the cult, and, and she would have the secret service round the office and the movement of that president by her spiritual advisors and calendars, whether it be tea leaves or what horoscope. That's wicked. For the throne. For the throne. We don't have a throne in America. You can't be a Christian nation when, when, the, when it says king and throne. For the throne is established by righteousness. You can take verse 12 and you can apply that to us. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 1, we are made kings and priests. And we who have served the Lord, we're going to get a millennial inheritance. We're going to have a throne in the millennium. And Jesus Christ will be the king of the kings. And in the millennium, after we've been judged at the judgment seat of Christ, we will be established in wickedness, uh, righteousness, I was reading wickedness, and we will not allow the wickedness. Now who, I know Paul and Peter and John, will be kings on their thrones and they will be established in, in righteousness and they will not allow wickedness. That's not true with worldly government. Righteous lips are the delight of the king. I wish Solomon will get off the realm of, of the politician. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to say, look, You cannot have today worldwide any ruler of a nation listening to the media and be able to apply yourself to verse 13. We even call it fake news. It would be to the delight of any world leader for a man to come up with a King James Bible and say, sit down in my court and tell us about the Bible. There was a king, I, I forget their name, under Jeremiah, and they brought the role to the king. And it was the right and righteous words that Jeremiah wrote down with Beirut, out of the mouth of God. And that king took a pen knife and cut that roll. I don't like that. And cut that roll. I don't like that. And cut that roll. And the Bible says that entire roll was burned upon the heart. That don't fit verse 13. Thomas Jefferson took a Bible and he literally took a pen knife and cut out of the Bible what he didn't night like and you got the Jefferson Bible. That's not verse 13. And they love him that speaketh right. How is your president or political uh, runner, how are they when somebody walks up to them, tells them the truth? What is their reaction? America, England, Africa, China, Germany, Mexico. If they don't love the person that speaks right, they are not to chapter 16, verse 13. The leaders of Daytona Beach, for whatever reason, they don't like the man that speaks right. 
They rather get rid of them. And just because they want to, they want to please the people, they want the people to be happy. They may like the preaching, but the people don't. They ought not care what the wicked. The wrath of the king is as a messengers of death. And that's monarchy. That's Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ comes back his second advent, that sword that comes out of his mouth, the, the fire that's coming out of his eye, the pure anger, it'll be death according to what Joel chapter 2 says. And I'm going to say this in light of goodness of the President of the United States, whoever he may be. In this country, you can rank on the president, you can insult the president, and he has no power. I believe it was King Henry. I think he, he's the one that had all the wives. And some of them just because he didn't like them. Mordecai, not Mordecai, uh, uh, Haman almost exterminated all the Jews because the king put a signature to it. Thank God God intervened. They love him that speak right. The wrath of the king is messengers of death. When, when what Haman wanted to do was, was put forth as the truth of Esther, the king stepped out. He came back in. He saw Haman laying at the, the couch of Esther. And in the king's anger, they, they covered his head and king hanged him. But a wise man will pacify it. That's Daniel chapter 3. Daniel gets word. What's going on? He's ruled all the magicians, all the astrologers, and everybody. And you guys are going to die before nightfall. Wow. What's going on? Well, he's had a dream, and those magicians deceived him. And he's angry. And he wants all them and all you to be dead. Daniel says, go up to the king and tell him, we'll tell him, God will tell him the interpretation. You know, the magicians, the astrologers and all that, and the president survived to later on to try to kill David, I mean, Daniel. Daniel appeased the king through the Lord and people's lives were spared. When there was a death threat by the king, Nebuchadnezzar. The light of the king's countenance is life. That's Jesus. And his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. That's all second advent. If you are a Jew and you did not receive the mark, you obeyed 144,000, God is pleased. You'll come in to the millennium. If you're a nation, and you help to the best of your ability to help the Jew out. Come into the rest, Jesus said. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold? You can't buy the wisdom with gold. Those colleges, they charge you a fortune. But they can't promise you a job. And to get instruct, uh, get understanding rather than chosen than silver. Wisdom and understanding will get you finances. Finances will not get you wisdom and understanding. That rich man, oh, everything's great. I'm going to tear everything down. I'm going to build bigger, better barns. And God says, thou fool, tonight your soul will be required. You're going to hell. That rich man in Luke chapter 15. That, that who man? The rich man in hell. The highway of the upright. I think there's, there's a song called the highway to hell. It's not actually a highway. It's called the Broadway. 
but there's a highway of the upright is to depart from evil. Get on the road and get away from evil. The Bible says you're involved in evil and you're involved in sin, get rid of it. To have the fear of the Lord, verse 6. You only repented because you got caught. He that keepeth his way, God's way, preserveth his soul. There's a way that seems right to man, but that's not the correct way. There's a way Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus is the only one that will preserve your soul. And we're going to stop there in Proverbs. I think we're at a good time right now. We're in no rush. And we'll pick up Proverbs 16, verse 18, Lord willing, Monday night.